In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use electrical calculations for electrical testing on site. And I'm going to follow the sequence of tests for an electrical installation condition report. As knowing when and how to use electrical calculations for testing on site is an important part of carrying out an ERCR. So the first test is the continuity of protective conductors. It is necessary to measure either the R1 plus R2 or R2 to confirm the continuity of CPC and to ensure that the impedance of the circuit is sufficiently low so that the current that may flow under fault conditions is high enough to operate the protective device within the disconnection time. When carrying out an initial design, the R1 plus R2 is calculated by multiplying the length of the circuit by tabulated values for R1 plus R2 per meter and a multiplier of 1.2 to allow for the difference in operating temperature. There is a video on my channel for calculating circuit length for resistance and I will put a link at the end of this video. Even though it's necessary to measure the R1 plus R2 during electrical testing, it can be useful to know how to calculate it. For example, if you find that the impedance is too high to comply with the disconnection time, one possible solution would be to reduce the length of the circuit. So it's useful to know how to calculate the maximum circuit length to limit the impedance of the circuit. So we can see the formula for calculating the length of the circuit for resistance here at the bottom of the screen. So we take the maximum ZS from table 41 and we subtract the maximum ZE and then we divide by the tabulated values for R1 plus R2 which can be found in the on-site guide and then we multiply by 1.2 and that will give us the maximum circuit length to comply with the disconnection time. Later in this video, I will talk about calculating ZS, which I'm sure you know is done by measuring R1 plus R2 and adding the measured values for ZE. However, while we're talking about R1 plus R2, I think it's important to note that while we can calculate the ZS from the measured values for R1, R2, the opposite is not true and it's not possible to accurately calculate the R1 plus R2 from the measured ZS. The reason for this is that when the installation is energized, the protective bonding conductors will be connected and parallel paths may exist, which can affect the accuracy of the measured ZS. Another reason is that when measuring ZS using a no trip setting to prevent tripping an RCD, the loop impedance tester uses a lower test current than is used on the highest setting that we use when measuring the ZE, and this can also affect the accuracy of the test. Measuring ZS is still particularly important, especially on socket circuits where there may be spurs taken from the circuit. As well as the individual CPCs for the circuits, BS7671 requires that continuity is checked on all protective conductors, including the earthing conductor, protective bonding conductors and supplementary bonding conductors. The resistance between simultaneously accessible conductive parts must comply with the following formula. So that is the resistance, being less than 50 volts divided by IA. Now IA is the minimum current required to operate the protective device within the disconnection time, and that can be found from the time curve charts. Where protection is by an RCD, the equation would become 50 volts divided by I delta N. So for a 30 milliamp RCD, it would be 50 divided by 30. This is done to limit the touch voltage. So the next test is the continuity of ring vinyl circuit conductors. As with the continuity of CPC for a radial circuit, the resistances are measured during an EICR. However, it is useful to be able to calculate them to check the results. When measuring R1 plus Rn for a ring circuit, the value will be equal to a quarter of the combined end-to-end -end readings for line and neutral. And the R1, R2 will be a quarter of the combined end-to-end -end readings for line and CPC. This is because of the effects of the loop of the ring circuit. So in the calculation on the screen, the R1 plus R2 in lower case is the combined resistance of end-to-end -end readings for the line and CPC. And if we divide that by four, that will tell us what the R1 plus R2 should be, which is useful com for comparison when you measure the R1 plus R2. Next, we need to verify the earth fault loop impedance. As I mentioned earlier, one way of determining the earth fault loop impedance, or ZS, is to add the measured value for R1 plus R2 
to the measured value for ZE, or we can measure the ZS. To verify the maximum ZS, we need to ensure that the measured ZS doesn't exceed the maximum permitted ZS for the protective device to ensure that the disconnection time is met in the event of a fault. The maximum ZS for some protective devices is listed in Table 41 of BS7671. These values are determined by the following formula. UO times CMIN divided by IA. For protective devices that aren't included in Table 41 of BS7671, it is necessary to obtain the maximum permitted ZS from the manufacturer. It is also important to bear in mind that the values obtained in Table 41 need to be adjusted to allow for the difference in temperature when the test is carried out and the operating temperature of the cable when the circuit is under load. This is described in Appendix 3 of BS7671, which gives the formula at the bottom of the screen. So compliance is achieved when the measured ZS is less than 0.8 times UO times CMIN divided by IA. So in other words, the values from table 41 minus 20%. I explain maximum ZS on another video on my channel and I will add a link at the end of this video. So we need to measure the ZE and the PFC at the origin of the installation. Also, if the consumer unit is not connected to the origin of the installation and is fed by a distribution circuit, we need to record the ZDB and the PFC at the consumer unit. On an EICR, the prospective fault current is the greater of the fault current or the short circuit current, which is typically the short circuit current. So when recording PFC, I recommend measuring between both line and earth and line and neutral, and then ensuring that the braking capacity of protected devices within the installation are sufficient. So on the slide, we can see the formula for the fault current, which is UO divided by ZE. Or if the consumer unit is fed by a distribution circuit, it would be UO divided by ZDB. So ZDB being the ZS for the distribution circuit. And then the formula for short circuit current is UO divided by ZSC, which is line to neutral. So additional protection is provided by 30 milliamp RCD. The maximum ZS when relying on a 30 milliamp RCD to comply with the disconnection time is 1667 ohms, for example, in a TT system. And this is given in table 41.5 of BS7671. Now, it's important to remember that RCDs protect against fault current. However, it's the MCB or overcurrent protected device that protects against short circuit current. So, volt drop is not accurately measured. However, it is important to note that if the voltage drop exceeds the limits in BS7671, it can affect the operation of any connected equipment. The maximum voltage drop is 3% for lighting and 5% for other uses, and can be calculated using the formula at the bottom of the screen. Please note that for cable sizes greater than 16 mil, it will be necessary to use the value for mill 